Tell me about that transition to Chicago, because that's quite a leap. It is a great city. I love it. And I used to, I had three jobs. I was, I was a dishwasher at the Grand Lux Cafe on Michigan Avenue. Mm-hmm. And I was doing open mics at night. And I was a security guard mm-hmm. at a tiny school. And it was, I'd venture to say, one of the best times in my life. You know, where you're, for some reason, you're broke as hell, but you always have enough money for booze and a pack of cigarettes. You know, at, at yeah. that age, yeah. it somehow shows up and you have enough money for that one date that you want to have. And there's kind of nothing to lose. You know, it was a great year of my life. And then my visa expired and I had to go home, oh. you know. Did you sell knives for a while? I sold Cutco Cutlery Kitchen Knives, uh, which is also the year after 9-11. So brown guy at your door with knives. <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, it's not a lot of sales. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, can I interest you in a... Sh- <laughs> Maybe don't start with the knife out at that point. But you have a... <laughs> like a demo, right? So they give you leather strips and then you cut the knife and then you pile up the strips and then you cut the pile of strips and you cut a penny in half. Great knives. And like a, I think it's like a $135 set at that time and you make like 40 bucks commission. I made zero sales. You made no sales. After 9-11, no chance. Um, were you doing comedy right after 9-11? I was. I, w- I was doing like rooms on the south side of Chicago. And what was that like? I was booed off stage seven weeks in a row at, at a Be- bar called Mike's. Is that because, I mean, before they would even listen to you? Yeah. It, just like, I mean, a South Side room in Chicago is always a tough room, right? Yeah. And, and very little patience. So I was just going up like, what's up with cockroaches or whatever? And they were like, fuck off. Um, and then <laughs> I... We do want to know what's up with cockroaches. What is up with cockroaches? I don't know. I think we'll... Coming to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> the secret life of cockroaches. No, um, and then I think the first joke I wrote was alliteration and not very good, but I just remember kind of yelling at people because I was just broke and frustrated and I was like, you know, you Americans, you don't value Indian people. We uh, teach you in colleges and we drive your taxis and we are your gynecologists and we sell you food. Without Indians, you'd be starving, stranded, sexless, sterile, and stupid. Uh, and that was the first laugh I got from like a group of people. Oh, that's uh, so. In a way, I mean, when did you start to see? Um, and this pre- presupposes you saw it change, but things soften. You know, in the time after nine eleven. I I I was gone by then. You know, yeah, but by the time yeah. they softened, because like, your I, visa expired. My visa expired. I went home and I wanted to get into you know Bollywood and. Um, I got a job at CNBC, which was the craziest thing. Like, I love John Stewart. I was a gigantic fan. Right. And I ended up taking a handy cam. Uh, well, sorry. Before that, I went to Mumbai to be a VJ. I don't know if you guys know what a VJ is. We know what a VJ is. <laughs> right? okay. yeah, yeah. So it's just me with like spiky hair. <laughs> And like no sleeves, and then well, you're there. <laughs> uh, that's all you need: right? spiky and hair, a shell necklace. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And at some point, a producer actually told somebody else that like his arms are too saggy, <laughs> so we're gonna give him fake tattoos to cover up the arms. And I was like, just give me sleeves. Uh, it would be easier <laughs> if you just. Give me sleeves. <laughs> this is why I've never, you can't find one picture of me sleeveless. It's, the, it's my first rule. I will have sleeves. Right? So now I have henna tattoos that I have to re- like to touch up every eight weeks. Um, and I was fired in like three months. And then I shot a pilot on my friend's kitchen table, which, le- which was like a news comedy pilot. Right. And CNBC picked me up and... I got to go on the primetime news at the end of the primetime news bulletin at 9.45 and do three minutes of jokes every day. And I was 26, you right. know, on a show that the prime minister is watching and, and that every major businessman is watching. And everybody was kind of cool and patient to say, this is clearly a kid and he's clearly very green, but let's give him time. And so I got to do that for like four years before trying to do film. You know, it's interesting. So you're... You knew you were funny and that you had this talent, but uh, acting seemed yeah. to be something that you were more interested in. At the time, yeah, for yeah. sure. I uh, There's a movie called Rangde Basanti, which is um, a Bollywood ensemble movie. And mm-hmm. 
you know hindi movies you know are full of beautiful people just yes. you know yeah. blessed by god beautiful and talented and amazing and i just kind of knew this isn't a space for me i'm, I'm i won't cut it and then i saw this movie that had this lovely ensemble with like three other guys that looked like me and you know now in india there's a path for like an adam sandler kind of an actor or a ben stiller kind of an actor right then there wasn't and then i'm like i i finally feel like there's a place for me in the film industry and uh, then i went to an audition line and it was a bunch of six foot you know two guys yep. who looked amazing so i i ended up shooting a stand up special with my own money and getting a dvd together just making sure that the dvd looked packaged enough to where it could belong next to i don't know magnolia or something in sure. a dvd library yeah. and it was called viragra uh which because you know <laughs> <laughs> puns are always fun and uh, i ended up going to every dvd library in mumbai where i knew filmmakers rented dvds from and just giving them 10 free copies and that made its way to different production houses and like got me auditions so i got to kind of shortcut my way in but that's i mean that's incredible uh gumption and 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 it really uh and that is i think a word from your culture gumption yeah um, uh, it's an ancient uh, sanskrit word <laughs> <laughs> uh but um that that shows a lot of ingenuity and uh and that's that's very impressive that you would do that and what you were you saw yourself as okay i could do this i'd like to be in i'd like to crack this bollywood yeah. film mm -hmm. industry and you know it is amazing to me i don't think i don't think most people who haven't uh looked into it can understand how massive those stars are in yeah. india i mean it, it, it's it's bigger than you know we think oh celebrities here are revered well the most revered celebrity here is probably you know disliked and liked almost in equal measure yeah. with a few exceptions but uh it's it's a whole other thing in india i think in the indian film industry once you get to whoever these top 10% are you know just the stars of stars probably the least famous of them is more famous than a kardashian you know right. it, it is the way that i would put it it's it's an amazing level of uh, respectful adulation and fame at the same time and it's because to me it represents beautiful escapism you know uh, picture like in my family we had sunday mornings was the only time that the entire family would go out together and you know dad is tired from work and mom is tired from work and you sit down in the movie theater and watch one bollywood movie and then go out for lunch so it has to be beautiful and large and magnanimous like if you show us spotlight we're going to kill ourselves <laughs> you know you, know, you, you don't want to see a movie where people in chinos <laughs> yeah. are in a fluorescently lit newsroom yeah, no. talking about child abuse no no I, no that's you know. not going to get the whole family <laughs> you know very hard to turn that into a musical um <laughs> So, I tried, I know. I, I looked into it. Spotlight uh, the musical hasn't I, happened. I tried. I put a lot of my own money into it and uh, I'll just say it was a mistake. <laughs>